In the previous videos, we did some basic statistics and plotted graphs in R. Before going into more complicated statistical designs, we'll look today at R graphical output devices. R has devices that mediate translation of graphical commands to create vector image files, raster image files, and displays on screens. If you go to the R console and type in question mark devices, and hit enter. A list of available devices will be open on the web browser. The default device for graphical commands is usually an on-screen display. But as you can see on this list, we have several other kinds of devices, of which some of them are vector graphic output devices and some of them are bitmap output devices. Let us plot a graph using some data. To do that, let us use arrow scripts as we've seen in the previous videos. So we'll go to file and new script and we have a tight window we go to windows tight vertically and we're going to have the editor on the left and the arrow console on the right so i'm going to paste in some scripts which i've copied and for those who have not seen the previous videos the script shows that we're creating a variable that reads a table and this table has been saved into the clipboard and the header is true, it's having a header and we're going to attach the data into R for analysis and using this code we're going to do a box plot. So let's go to our Excel file which we've been using all through. We highlight this data and we go to Control C for copy and when we come here and we put our cursor in front of this line and we go here, run line of selection, a box plot shown. Now to see how we can transfer this graphic for editing into a vector graphic program like Inkscape or Illustrator. So yeah, we have Inkscape, which does almost the same thing like Adobe Illustrator, but it's free. So let's go to R, right click, copy as meta file, go back to Inkscape and paste. And here we have our meta file. That is the graphic. We can zoom in a little bit to see it. And if we go back to R, the second possibility is to go right click and copy as bitmap. And we go back to Inkscape and we paste. So right now, if we put them side by side, we have here the meta file on the right and bitmap on the left. Now, the main difference is that with the meta file, you can edit a lot of things. So as you see here, if we highlight, we can access individual components and here with the bitmap there isn't any possibility to edit here for instance we can highlight this and go to object and we go to fusion strokes and we go to stroke style we may make this to points and we increase this to to say two and this is the result so let's take ctrl z to go back another difference between the two is that if you started to zoom in into both graphs already at the magnification of about 400 you begin to see that the bitmap gets pixelated like we see here if we go into the right that is the bitmap it's pixelated poor quality and if we go to the left that is the meta file which is a vector it's not pixelated so another alternative to bring this into Inkscape or Illustrator is to go here, right click and go save as meta file, which is a vector format. And so let's save here, chart, meta file, and on the desktop, or we could go right click, save as postscript, and let's save chart, postscript, and again on the desktop. So these are the two files we've just saved. If we go now into Inkscape and we pull both files. So the first one is a meta file and the second one is the postscript. We're going to see that they import in different ways. For the postscript, we have this initial page opening for which we have to go here. And there are settings which will leave at default and we go OK. So this below is a postscript. And at times when you import the postscript, it comes in as a double graph. So we may pull this by the side and delete it. This is basically the same copy like what we deleted. So above is a meta file and here is a postscript. Now we see that both look identical in this case, but in some cases, when you import as postscript, it is better because when you import as meta file, you may lose some elements of the graph. It is left for you to go ahead and always try both possibilities or all possibilities to see which way is best. For me, 
I prefer using PostScript as a means to import into Inkscape from R. We can also export the graphs using plotting devices. So here I've put in new quotes compared to what you already saw before. And basically I'm spacing here so that you get a clear view of what we have. So we have here a PDF device which will open and here we've written PDF and file is equal to myfigure.pdf use thing bats is equal to false and here below the plotting code we're going to say dev.off which means uh, ending of the code. So here we open and here we end and this simple code is going to print our graph or our chart into a particular printing device, in this case PDF. If you change this into different kinds of things like we saw here, be it PostScript, XFIG, Bitmap, Pictex, Cairo, PDF, SVG and so on, it's going to render it into that. So let's go put our cursor there and go run. So we have this shown and we go to the box plot, run and we notice that just the code is written and when we go dev off we go run and it shows us windows 2. so before doing this what i did was that i had to go to file and i changed the working directory into desktop by accessing here so when i go to desktop here is the chart as a pdf if i double click to open we're going to have the chart as a pdf in there so I minimize that. Having the chart as a PDF, I want to just delete this. We have already in here. We can grab the chart and pull it into Inkscape. And we're going to see this dialog box coming. We leave everything here default, go OK. And it's going to open the chart in Inkscape. And this being a vector graphic, we can access it and edit it the way we want. So let's go back to the code and see what particular thing we use which is very important which you have to take note of we use here use dingbats is equal to false what does that mean if you want to edit your file in a vector editor like inkscape or illustrator some of the plotting point objects might look like letters instead of cycles squares etc to avoid this problem you have to set use dingbats is equal to false in this particular code so the export to devices works well when we use a code like this and in this case we use PDF we could have replaced this by any other device which is found on our list. Now this does not work when we have to do composite plots for instance we may want to plot the box plot and we may want a strip chart on top of the box plot so for that I've copied some code which I'm just going to paste here and for the notes there you see quote for dot on plots that will be in an upcoming video here basically what this code is going to do is it's going to produce strip chart after the box plot has been made if we were to go here and just produce the box plot alone we go here put the cursor here go box plot let's open the window so here is a box plot and if we put the cursor here and go run we are going to have dots on the box plot like you see here. So basically this is something I'm going to do in the next video or in one other video. And it has to do with the present standards with journals like Nature or some other high-end journals require for you to reproduce figures so that uh, others can see what the data points were and appreciate on their own. So this has been produced well on the on-screen device but if we were to go here and we want to produce all of this on a PDF device, it won't work. So beware of that and know that in such a case, you may just want to produce on the on-screen device, go file, save as PostScript, and then go on to use it. So we can go here, right click, copy as beta file. And if we go to Inkscape and we paste, we're going to have the graph. And right now you can access this and edit it whichever way you want to edit thank you for watching our videos please do not forget to leave us a comment below or a thumbs up we look forward to seeing you in the next video